I will give the second part of the um, joint work with Horan. Um, so, so the first thing I will explain the main results, second part of the main results, and then uh, the proof. So I will keep, um, I will keep the, um, mostly the notation in the talk of Horan. So F will be a totally real field, and I will let L be the um, completion of F at some place above P and assume it to be an unramified extension of degree F. So we, we introduce the neural notations, the integral rings, and the residue field and fix a uniformizer. Also, okay, sorry, the uniformizer is just P. <laughs> um, then uh, I take G to be um, GL to L, and then that to be the center. P is the upper boreal, P bar is the lower boreal subject. Also let K to be the GL to OL, and uh, uh, I denotes the Ibahori subgroup. For K1 is the first uh, uh, principal congruence subgroup. And for I1 is the proper Ibahori. Um, Z1 is the uh, intersection of Z with K1. I mean, the sum term of K1. Um, so we also fix the low bar. It's a two-dimensional continuous uh, representation of a uh, absolute dialog group of L. Um, then in the mass results, it will be assumed a uh, reducible non-split and strongly generic uh, in the sense of a uh, Horan's talk. So you, you need not be, um, I mean, the genericity condition, we need to put this, but um, it's, uh, it's not, uh, you don't need uh, to be care about that. Um, the most important condition that we assume is the reducible non-split. Um, so pi low bar is a smooth and admissible representation of a G corresponding to the um, eigen space uh, in the multiple cohomology um, of uh, some globalization of low bar. So you need to take some R bar, which is a global representation, um, as in the talk of Horan. So in his talk, uh, it's denoted by pi V D of R bar for some uh, um, from. So the main goal is to understand the structure of this representation pi rho bar. So we already um, see a lot of results in the conference about uh, uh, the structure of pi rho bar. So let me recall uh, some of them. Um, so we already know, first of all, about the circle of a pi rho bar. So the k circle. It's uh, the um, wet part of Sears conjecture. We know that it's isomorphic to a direct sum of uh, sigma, where sigma runs over all the um, cell weights associated to low bar, explicit set. And again, by M20 Savita, we know the I1 invariance. Also, um, by um, myself and the Horan, then um, Lei Mora Shan. For the semi-simple case and the lay for the general case, we know the K1 invariance is exactly equal to the D0 row bar. The construction of D0 row bar is uh, already explained in the, in the Horan talk. Uh, so then uh, we also know the uh, pi row bar, um, the subspace killed by MK1 square. So MK1 is the maximal idea of the Ivasava algebra associated to K1. Uh, and this space, this reductible lay means uh, it's just the pi rho bar killed by the maximum value of k1. Here we take, we, we know the uh, square. And also we know the um, subspace killed by mi1 to the cube. This results allows to control the gap on the kill of dimension of, uh, of pi rho bar. Yeah. Um, we know also other uh, results like uh, the uh, local global compatibility, uh, which means um, uh, we can um, determine some uh, special value of the action um, of uh, the matrix so zero, one, P zero on, on the uh, I-bar invariance, uh, on the I-bar invariance to, I mean, to determine the diagram structure. Uh, this is mentioned in the talk of uh, Christopher Bohai. 
but you will see that all these results are about the, um, I mean, the restriction of pi rho bar to, to k or to Ivahori, or even we only know a very small piece of, of the, this representation. You see, pi rho bar itself is infinite dimensional, but all this space are finite dimensional, right? It's so just a, a small piece. So you, you may ask the question, what is the structure of pi rho bar or the representation of, of the whole group due to L? So in particular, you, 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 can, you might ask uh, if this representation is finitely generated. And if this representation is a, a, a finite length, right? So let me remark that in general, uh, for multiple representations, we don't know uh, finite generated imply finite length. So there's no proof about this. Maybe it's wrong. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't know. I, have, I, I don't know the answer. Anyways, the unknowing. So then I will explain a uh, conjecture um, due to Correa and Pascunas. Um, so the first thing is that pi rho bar is generated by D0 rho bar. So in particular, it's finite generated. I want to explain a little bit um, um, th this um, finite generation. Uh, if you have followed uh, the, the lecture of uh, Shran yesterday, so he explained a construction of Bohe and Paskunas using the diagram. So he defined, uh, start with a diagram. You, you recall that diagram is just uh, determined by D0 bar, right? You take the I1 invariance and you fix uh, uh, some, uh, some action of the matrix 0, 1, P0, you get a diagram. And you use the diagram, you may associate, in fact, a family of uh, GL2 representations. So how to do this, you, you use some uh, injective army loop and you take the supplementation generated by, by this D0. Yeah. So that's why the conjecture, uh, I mean, this, um, this uh, representation uh, from uh, cohomology also um, generated by D0. The second part is that pi rho bar has finite length. And precisely, if rho bar is itself useful, we also expect that pi rho bar is irreducible. And in fact, we, uh, we expect uh, pi rho bar is a super singular representation. Then if rho bar is, uh, is a direct sum of two characters, uh, we expect pi rho bar is semi-simple. Its length now is not two anymore because it's, it's a f plus one. So in the case of a gl 2 qp you get length two. But in general, you get length f plus one, and it's isomorphic to a uh, direct sum of f uh, no, no f plus one representations, where for pi zero and pi f, they are principal series, and we can write them very explicitly, determined by the uh, by the two characters. Here, omega is a mod p cyclotomy character. Um, if you take f equals one then this rotation is exactly isomorphic to the direct sum of pi zero and pi f, just the two principal series. But if f is uh, bigger than one, you will get other representations which are conjecturally super singular. The last case, if you have a reducible non-split case, then we um, expect that this uh, representation pi rho bar has a uh, filtration. Um, so by this, I mean for pi zero, it is a circle, G circle of, of, of pi rho bar. And you multiply pi zero, you get pi one in the circle. Then you go on. So pi f is the last piece. So this is also the called the co-circle of pi rho bar. So this is a circle and this is a co-circle. Moreover, we expect that if you take a rho bar semi simplification, then pi rho bar SA is in, in the second part, this term is equal to the, um, the pi rho bar semi simplification. So I mean, um, this pi i is the same as the uh, pi i here. But this, um, I think this is very hard to prove. Um, and also very hard to prove that this representation pi i 
um, are, are, are purely local. That is uh, only depends on Ruba because uh, in general, uh, you need to uh, fix some global setting to get uh, this implementation. Okay, this is uh, roughly the conjecture. Um, let's look at uh, one example in the case L equals QP, which is knowing. So let's assume Ruba is, uh, is of this form, um, omega r plus one and uh, one non split extension. Then we know that in this case, there's only one cell weight associated to Ruba, namely R f squared. Um, the D0 Ruba, this is already um, um, explained in how I talk. We have R f squared and then followed by direct sum of two weights, two cell weights, sim p minus one minus r and sim p minus three minus r. So this is a circle and this is a, the, the second layer. And the pi over bar we know that is a non-split extension of two principal series, pi zero, pi one. Uh, this is just, uh, just this, these two representations. And you will, if you look at um, the intersection of a pi zero with d zero bar, then you exactly get these two weights in red. Okay, so these two cell weights in red are containing pi zero. And this blue one uh, is in pi one. I mean, you, you mod this, mod pi zero, the image of d zero bar in pi one is just the, um, the, the, the last weight, sim p minus three minus r. So, um, so you see um, pi rho bar is generated by d zero bar. And we show in the math theorem, we show this is a general case. So I, I will keep, the um, global hypothesis in Horan talk and uh, assume rho bar is a reducible non-split uh, from now on and uh, strongly generic, uh, a notion explained in, in this talk. So the first theorem uh, is that so as a generation, pi rho bar is generated by d0 rho bar. This, um, I mean, uh, it, these answers um, the first question, so proves the, namely proves the conjecture, the first, first uh, um, statement in the conjecture. So the theorem B is that um, if we assume uh, F equal two, the uh, pi rho bar has less three. And its, uh, it's form is like uh, pi zero, pi one, pi two, as in the conjecture. So pi zero, pi two are two principal series explicitly determined by rho bar. But pi one, um, I mean, we only know is some super singular. We don't know much information about it. Although we know it's a so circle, cool, but not much information. Um, so these are, this are the, the, the main results. Uh, uh, so far, we only know, uh, we can prove uh, the length for f equals two. Um, uh, if we say um, f is bigger, then there will be much more super singular in the middle, and uh, it's hard to control uh, to control the um, yeah to control the um, because it's hard to control. Uh, uh, if you have two super singular representations, it's hard to study this extension. So that's why we cannot uh, we can only prove the results for f equals two. So anyway. For the theorem A, it works for any if. And theorem B, uh, you will see later, it will be an easy uh, consequence of theorem A. Um, before explaining the proof, I will state a corollary. Uh, it is that the endomorphism ring of pi rho bar is just a scalar. So I mean, um, This corresponds to uh, the fact that rho bar is not split, so that is an amorphism ring of rho bar is just a scalar. So the two facts are corresponding to each other. But the proof, you see, uh, there's no simple proof for, for, for the corollary because it's hard um, to get information for pi rho bar. So by this result, it, it would be interesting to study the deformation problem, because you know that 
um, you, can, you, can, you can look at um, the deformation just uh, like uh, uh, Mather uh, did for the Galois representations, the anamorphism um, ring is a scalar. Um, so for example, it, it would be interesting to compute uh, the dimension of extension one of pyro bar pyro bar. Um, like this uh, corresponds to the uh, tangent space of the deformation factor. Um, yeah, for example, it, it would be nice to know this dimension match uh, with uh, the, the dimension of a tension one of a row bar row bar with row bar I mean, for Galois representations. But I don't know the answer so far. Um, so let me e explain briefly the proof, which is uh, very easy. Um, so to pi row bar, we can associate the diamond diver. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, you take the K1 invariance and also I1 invariance, you take the inclusion. It forms uh, a diver. Then you take a restriction, you get a morphism rings from the endomorphism ring of pi bar to the endomorphism of D bar. So here is the endomorphism as divers, right? You, you get such a natural morphism. The point is that this morphism is injective because of theorem A, because pi row bar is generated by D0. So when you do the restriction, it's injective. Then um, by Bascunas, the explicit structure of D0 bar, you can, you can show that as a diagram, um, this uh, anamorphism is, uh, is scalar. Um, so this is a proof, quite a, a direct the consequence of a theorem A. Um, from now on, I will explain the proofs. So let's first uh, look at the proof of theorem A. Um, so I will go to some details. Um, so first step is to show that the G circle of pi rho bar is equal to pi zero. So we already saw um, the conjecture form of pi rho bar in this case. It's like uh, it's a, it has a unique um, circle filtration, pi zero, pi one, pi two. So the first step is to show um, the circle is just a pi zero. But this is, this is a well-knowing result. So I will recall the proof. First of all, we know the circle of pi rho bar, a scale representation. It's a sum, direct sum of the cell weights. There's always a very special cell weight, namely the ordinary cell weight. Um, this is uh, uh, the R0, I1 uh, to the Rf minus one. So this II appears in the talk of Horan uh, in the definition of rho bar. So there's always a very special um, weight. Um, cell weight. In any case, for, uh, I mean, for, for, for rho bar, um, even rho bar is a semi, se, a split, it always um, in W rho bar contains this special weight. And um, then the structure of D0 rho bar shows that for any irreducible um, sub representation of pi rho bar, say pi prime, it must contain this sigma zero. So this is, uh, you see the, the, the explicit the structure of D0 bar. Um, in this case, D0 bar is indecomposable because rho bar is indecomposable. Um, you, you use the, um, the diagonal structure. Um, so this is explicit. It always contains sigma zero. So to show the circle of pi rho bar is exactly pi zero, you insert it to show G on um, the sub representation generated by sigma zero is a irreducible. I mean, we, we actually show this is a irreducible principal series, right? Just a pi zero. Yeah, if we can show this is irreducible, then. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this any irreducible pi prime, uh, so it, it must contain sigma naught as a, as a socle, G socle? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the circle. Sorry, in the circle. Yes, okay. yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, this because for any um, you reduce for any supplementation, it must contain um, some some so so it's circle is non-zero because for more p representation, you always have non-zero circle of pi prime. 
so it must contain some cell walls here. So one of them is the W low bar. Then you stop anyone, you use the diagonal structure, you can produce sigma zero. You always go, go back to sigma zero. So this uses the bar is, uh, is, is not split. Yeah, this is a uh, proof. I think it's included in the, in the paper for Patronas. So we are left to show this one is, uh, is a irreducible uh, principle series. The argument is uh, like uh, some style of wedge cycling whose proof I also recall. So by Fabrinius reciprocity, this one is a quotient of the compact induction. So we, so we know that uh, this compact induction carries an action of FT, which is a high algebra of uh, uh, bug delivery. So uh, this is um, by knowing in the, um, in the course of uh, Shahan. And then you choose a non-zero vector V0 in sigma zero I1. So it's character for I implementation. Uh, I denote by chi zero. Then you apply the hack operator T to TV zero. So if this is zero, yeah, so assume this is zero, then some load hold factor of this, um, I mean, um, this uses the, the, the explicit, uh, explicit uh, um, um, definition of the hacker, algebra, uh, hacker operator, some load hold factor um, induced the representation car zero S. And here, car zero S is a conjugate co uh, character of car zero, other than sigma zero. Because this one is zero, it will generate some, some so-called sigma zero. So if it is zero, you find some other cell weight, some weight will be in so-called pi low bar, okay? But do you know the so-called pi low bar? It's just a direct sum of the cell weights. So some, some load hot factor other than sigma zero will occur in W bar. But you can check this is not the case because you can write down, down, write down W bar explicitly. So this is not the case. Um, so so we, we get TV zero is not zero, but we also have mutis one. So TV zero must be a non-zero scalar of V zero because sigma zero occurs um, with mutis one in the circle. This uh, by, um, I mean, a standard result of by the this corresponds to um, principal series. Okay, this is a proof. Um, so to exactly show um, this orientation, this uh, principal series is equal to pi zero, we need to compute um, the ordinary part. Because uh, you only know um, sigma zero in the circle, so you also need to compute the lambda. So equivalently, you need to compute the ordinary part. Um, so this is, uh, I mean, not hard, uh, already knowing by my work, also uh, work of the Dean for the, so my work for the um, Schumer curve case, so for Brady for the um, definite case. So it's, this is known. So we have, a, so, so for this is for the step one, the g circle of pi by is pi zero. But it's essentially it's knowing, it's well knowing. So the, the step two is to show the pi row bar is essentially safe due. So to, to talk about this uh, notion, I need to take the uh, Pontiac due. In this case, it's just a linear due. Um, so the duality here is, um, is for the uh, functor extension 2f uh, uh, over lambda. Uh, this is uh, ex explained in the first lecture of uh, Benjamin Schumann. Um, so here, lambda is a Ibasawa algebra for K1 mod Z1. Uh, you look at uh, the extension of 12. Um, uh, then, um, then you have a, you have a self, self duality. Um, so extension to F for pi rho bar dual is isomorphic to pi rho bar dual. But you need to do a twist because uh, these two uh, sides uh, have different central correct. You need to do a twist to correct this uh, central correct. Yeah, you have this. So how to prove this? So proof is uh, use uh, the results in the in, in Horan's talk that m infinity is a flat over r infinity. 
So I recall that this follows from uh, um, our computation on the gap on the k law of dimension and also an observation of a g and a newton. So once you have the correct uh, gap on the k law of dimension, you can show m infinity is flat over r infinity. And also we know r infinity is a regular local rate because rho bar is a very generic. So you get a causal complex resolution for pi rho bar dual. Remember that pi rho bar dual by definition is uh, m infinity mod by the maximum ideal of r infinity. So you, 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 you get um, a causal uh, resolution of this one. Um, so, so essentially, you want to use m infinity itself dual to deduce pi rho bar itself dual. Yeah. Uh, you, you, this is not exactly the case. You, you just uh, you need to reduce m infinity to um, use a link. Um, between m infinity um, and uh, m turns complete cohomology. We do know that m turns complete cohomology is self dual. Uh, we know that. So using this, we deduce the self duality for, for pi rho bar. So we all also know um, if you take pi zero in the circle, it's, it is also, um, it's not self dual, it's, it's a cohen Macaulay. It's a result of a cohorts. So if you take extension to f for this pi zero dual, you get pi f dual yeah. after twist. This is the same twist as above. So you get, um, as a consequence of step one, you get that the g co circle of pi rho bar is pi f. Yeah. We, we know that pi, the circle of pi rho bar is pi, a, pi zero. Uh, now by duality, we get the g co circle of pi rho bar is pi f. So let me remark that in general, uh, for a general smooth and miss representation, the co-circle could be zero. Although the circle is never not zero, if the representation itself is not zero. But the co-circle could be zero. For example, you take an injective envelope of, uh, say, in the, in the construction for a particular then um, the co-circle is zero. So, so I mean, this uh, this statement is um, somehow uh, um, um, not 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 trivial. So this has the following consequence: that because pi f is a co-circle, so you take any subspace of pi rho bar, it will generate a pi rho bar as a G representation, if and only if you look at the projection of a tau to pi f. This is a co circle. So you have a quotient, natural, natural quotient to pi f. If I know this, the, the projection to pi f is non zero, right? Because otherwise, if the projection is zero, you get tau is contains the radical of pi rho bar. So it cannot generate the, the pi rho bar. So this is a direct consequence of, uh, of the first statement. Okay. And then we get the following uh, criterion for, um, for finite generation. Um, so I take tau to be a sub implementation of pi rho bar. It, it, it will be finite dimensional space. If you can find for some i, some correct chi of uh, Ivahori group, such that the composition from extension i chi tau goes to extension i chi pi rho bar, then goes to extension i chi pi f. So this composition is induced by this composition, right? If you have this one composition is non zero, then pi rho bar can be generated pi tau as representation. This is quite easy because if this is non zero, then a priori, this one is non-zero, right? It's also non-zero. So tau generates pi rho bar as documentation. So this is a, this gives us a, um, a criterion which is a very useful in practice. So our next ta task will be to verify such um, such um, criterion. So we will find an explicit total bar, which is a mutis free 
as I rotation and finite dimensional, which is satisfying this criteria. And so, uh, consequently, pi log r can be generated by tau log. But now, before uh, doing this, I need to explain the relation of a tau log r with the d zero bar, because we want to prove recalling theorem A, you want to prove pi log is generated by d zero bar, right? This is a k rotation, not not uh, i uh, Of course, it's i rotation, but not uh, not like this, right? You need I need to explain the relation between the, the two statements. Let let me explain. So we know that because tau log bar generates a pi log bar, so its projection to pi log bar pi f sorry, is non zero. So it has a non zero i one invariance because i one is a proper group. We can uh, compute the i one invariance of pi f because this is a principal series. Uh, it's already done in the work of Bardelli and me. We know that this is two dimensional. And the two characters I will denote by chi f and its conjugate um, for some character, which can be um, determined explicitly. Um, we check that this correct pi f s, the conjugate, does not occur in tau bar. But this follows from the, the construction of tau bar. Also, I will not explain this, but just believe, believe this. Uh, we can check this. So the image of the, the tau bar in pi f must contain chi f, right? Because the other one can, does not occur. And then we check that this chi f um, uh, lies in the intersection of tau rho bar and d zero rho bar. So this um, um, shows d zero rho bar also generates pi rho bar. You use, uh, sorry, you use this statement. So this, this statement works for any subspace of pi rho bar, subspace, sub weight space. You apply this because pi f is non zero. So this is a link between the two style of uh, statements. And uh, finally, I explain why I pass from K rotation to I rotation. Uh, the reason is somehow like uh, in the, in, when we prove the uh, gap on the key law of dimension, because for K rotation, uh, it's hard to write down a minimal injective resolution because we want to compute the equation I, right? If you, you use k rotation, you need to um, write down minimal injective resolution of d0 bar. And even now, I don't know how to write it down uh, a minimal resolution of d0. But for i rotation, I can first construct a minimal resolution in the graded level for the gradient module. Um, and then I lift to, uh, to i rotation. So here I explain why it's doable for gradient module, because um, it's uh, explained in the lecture of uh, Shihan, uh, for this uh, Ibahori group, if you take uh, the graded algebra uh, of the uh, Ibasaba algebra associated to I, then you get a, a very nice structure. It is a tensor product of some uh, um, it, it, it looks like some, uh, I mean, test product of the corresponding um, graded algebra for QP. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to handle. So you can, you can write down um, the resolution for each um, embedding and you take the tensor product to get a real uh, resolution for graded uh, uh, module and then you lift to, um, to a resolution of total. This is the reason why I need to use I rotation. So, okay, uh, let's continue step three. Um, we prove that um, this strategy works if I take I equals 2F and uh, uh, chi to be uh, chi zero S, uh, where chi zero is the uh, I invariance of sigma zero. I first show gamma 2F is an uh, isomorphism. So what is gamma? So gamma is uh, the second morphism. I show gamma to F here is an isomorphism. So I want to check, um, I mean, for I equals to F, the composition is non-zero. 
So we are left to show beta to f is non-zero, right? So first step is to show gamma to f is isomorphic. And you will, if you do computation, we really need to pass to, to f. Because if you look at, uh, let me see, if you look at, uh, say, i equals 1, this morphism is 0. Gamma 1 is 0. Uh, you need to pass to gamma 2f. And this is why this uh, caused some difficulty when I do the, um, when I first try to handle with uh, uh, D0 bar because um, you need to really write down a, a resolution because you need i equals to 2f. OK, let me explain roughly the proof. Um, I want to show some morphism at this level uh, from this guy to the corresponding extension group with pi of r replaced by pi f to be isomorphism. But I don't know how to compare them because we can show the two space have the same dimension, both equal to one. But it's not clear why the morphism between them is non-zero, right? So I so we do some reduction. We do some. Uh, we transfer this group to this one for G rotations. Let me uh, explain the morphisms. So the first one they induce by um, Frobenius because this is I rotation. This is K rotation. Just uh, Frobenius. So this is isomorphism. So the second one. This is because sigma zero can be embedded in the, in the, in the induction. This, in fact, is equal to the so-called k so, so you will naturally get a morphism for the second morphism. And the third one from a k rotation uh, to um, pi zero to, to g rotation. This uses a presentation due to Bart uh, which uh, it, 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 which uh, I mean express a principal series in terms of uh, compact induction. So pi zero is isomorphic to a compact induction of sigma zero mod by t minus some lambda zero, some non-zero lambda zero. So using this, you can, uh, you can you can get a morphism here. So the degree here shift by one um, is clear. So the first one is isomorphism. Then I can we can show the second and third one are subjective. This is because pi rho bar has injective dimension to f. So this also follows um, by the uh, flatness of m, m infinity, um, uh, mean, sorry, follows from the gap on the key of dimension of pi rho bar is equal to f. In fact, it's a cohen Barclay module. Uh, so it's, um, uh, sorry, it's gap on the key of dimension is f. So it's great, it's 2f. Uh, so it's uh, because it's a cohen Barclay and uh, um, this grade will be equal to the uh, predictive dimension of the, 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 the linear U. Uh, so this corresponds to the injective dimension of pi bar itself. So this is 12. So you see, uh, naturally, um, this, this, this morphism is subjective because the extension 2f plus 1 um, vanish. And also in a, in a similar way, get, this is also subjective. Okay. Actually, all this morphism I isomorphism because uh, of uh, for reason of dimensions, all i equals one. You can, you can do computation. And it aim for pi f. Uh, you can replace pi rho bar by pi f. You get the same thing, all are dimension one. But you need to show, as I said, you need to show the morphism from this guy to the corresponding space, uh, extension chi zero s with pi f is non-zero. So we are reduced to show the corresponding morphism from this guy to a tension 2f plus 1 uh, of uh, pi 0, pi f is non-zero, right? And now we can use a spectral sequence of uh, ordinary pass functor of m -M Um, So the spectral sequence imply the tension 2f plus 1 of pi zero for any V. So here V can be any smooth and miscible G rotation. So in particular, you apply this for two uh, pi rho bar and pi F. This is isomorphic to extension F plus one of chi zero with RF odd P V. 
So here RF is a higher derived um, factor of odd P for the ordinary part. Okay. So this is because RF plus one order uh, vanish and also intention F plus two for T for the T, uh, sorry, here T is the torus also vanish. So you have such an isomorphism. So we are left to show this morphism from RF odd pi u bar to RF odd pi F to be an isomorphism, right? This is a trivially selective because RF plus one order is always zero, right? This is a property of the, the, the ordinary parts. Um, so it's, it's the highest degree, uh, it's just, the, 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 it's just equal to F, yeah, the degree of uh, L over 2P. So again, this is isomorphism for the reason of the dimensions, both are equal to uh, dimension one. So in all we get that, um, the, the, the morphism gamma to F is an isomorphism. So for, from now on, I will take uh, in this criterion, I take I equals to F. So you see for the second morphism, we don't need to, to use information of tau, of tau. We only just care about I and chi, right? And next a, a step, I will define, I will, um, I mean, um, I will not, give the precise definition, but I will introduce the tau to show pi to f is uh, non-zero. And actually, um, we will show pi to f uh, is uh, selective. So this is a step four. Uh, we show pi beta to f, sorry, beta to f uh, is uh, non-zero. And for some well choosing, I remandation total bound. Actually, we show for any i, beta i is a subjective uh, for any i, inductively. I first, we first show for pi beta one, beta zero, beta one, and then inductively for any i. This is a uh, subjective. Um, to explain proof, um, we need to assume Luba is maximally non-split, uh, which corresponds to the fact that W low bar uh, is, uh, contains only one cell weight, um, just a sigma zero, the ordinary cell weight. Um, without this assumption, we, we, of course we, we have a proof, um, but uh, we need to modify the argument below to, uh, in general case, we need to modify. So the argument below I, um, I explain is some uh, simplified version of the argument. So let first consider some uh, situation in commutative algebra. Um, um, so let R be a Nelson low power n and M is a maximum ideal. I fix some elements Xi in the maximum ideal. Um, you can define the causal complex, um, um, so K0, K1, K2. So each Ki is a free module uh, of rank, uh, the binomial uh, Ni is a classical construction. Then let's assume we have a morphism of a complex from the causal complex to some uh, complex F of free R modules. Okay, so we have the first following lemma, which is, I mean, uh, originally due to uh, Sia a uh, long time ago. Uh, we assume that. So x1 to xn are linearly independent mod by m square. I mean, which means on their image in the tangent space are linearly independent. And uh, beta zero, so you take beta zero from k zero to f zero. Both of them are free module. So we assume beta zero, I mean, it's, this is injective and it's a, a direct sum. Uh, this is a direct sum of, of, of K, K0 is a direct sum of F0. Um, then the conclu conclusion is that for any I, beta I is also a direct sum for any I. So you may now 
imagine the proof. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. So, so, sorry. Uh, so we want to show beta to f um, is, is uh, in fact is subjective. So by this uh, lemma, somehow we are reduced to show this for beta zero or, or some for 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 um, I mean for lower degree. But we cannot do this directly because um, you cannot. You need to construct the R in, in this lemma. It will not be the R infinity because um, R infinity only um, x on the um, on the M infinity. It does not x on the on the total bar resolution total. Bar. So let me then recall that M infinity is flat of R infinity, R infinity which is a regular local ring. So we get a causal complex resolution of pi over bar. Let me denote by p, t, p, p dot. And also we can construct a minimal projected resolution of a total bar dual. I take dual, so we consider projected resolution. I denote by q dot. So as I said, to construct this, I first pass to the uh, gradient module and use the structure of the gradient module of a uh, uh, the Yiba Saba algebra, and then I lift. So the inclusion gives the protection um, pi lo bar due to total bar due, and hence induced by the projectivity uh, a complex of uh, uh, a morphism between complex p dot to q dot. So to apply the lemma of Serre. We cannot, I mean, we cannot apply to, uh, I mean, we cannot apply to R equals to R infinity because R infinity does not act on the, the Q, Q dot, right? So to apply this lemma, I need to find some finite dimensional I recognition lambda. So I, I cannot explain the, 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 the construction so such that the R, the anamorphism of lambda is isomorphic to some uh, um, very simple ring. Uh, you see, it's a uh, it's a linear ring, um, um, some power series ring modeled by the maximum ideal square square. So, so you see, we, we to apply a lemma there, we only need this one. So you can replace R by by its quotient of by a mod by m square. It, it does not match because we only require uh, the linear independence bought by m square. So it's harmless to pass to uh, an itinerary. ring. So I, I find this lambda, satisfy this, and I apply this functor. I can do to get a covariant functor. Apply the functor to this morphism of complex. So you get home p dot to lambda due goes to home q dot lambda due, right? So the importance is here, each one, each term carries, um, I mean, carries uh, R module structure because of lambda, right? R is an anamorphism of lambda. So R acts on lambda and hence X on every such module. This why, um, so this allows us to, to, to use uh, lemma of cell. So we need to check the two conditions in the lemma, but I, I will not explain the detail just to say for A, uh, I recall the A, the XI are linearly independent. Uh, this use uh, um, that pi low bar killed by MI1 trip is mutually free. In uh, some sense, uh, um, roughly, I mean, XI spans uh, the full tangent space. So this one, uh, recall that um, it's, a, it's a computed uh, explicitly uh, to uh, control the Gaffan kill of dimension. And for condition B, um, um, which means for beta zero, this is an injective and a direct summand. Uh, this uses a, a explicit construction total bar. Uh, which also explains that total bar cannot be too small because it has to, you want to prove this guy generates pi bar. So it cannot be um, 
smaller. For example, you take if you take this guy to be zero, uh, then of course you cannot verify uh, the first uh, uh, condition because uh, here Q dot is a minimal resolution, right? So this use this um, a priori says that total bar cannot be too small. Um, so so far I have a. Uh, uh, finish the proof for the uh, theorem A um, uh, that is a uh, pyro bar can be generated uh, by D0 bar as a D replication. So next one, I will explain the proof of theorem B. So recall that we will assume F equals two and we want to show pyro bar has less three, right? So pi zero, pi one, pi two. But by the proof of sigma A, we already know is the SOCO is pi zero, is the COSOCO is pi two. So there is something in middle that we uh, denote by V. So essentially you need to show V is irreducible and uh, super singular. That part is easier to show. So the, 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 part, the, the essential part is to show V is irreducible. So step one, we show that this is the old work of myself. V admits a unique irreducible sub uh, uh, Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, V. Uh, so, I, sorry, I should say pi rho bar mod by pi zero uh, admits uh, a unique irreducible sub representation, which must be super singular. So this uh, we denote by pi one. Um, and yeah, uh, then once you have pi one, uh, you are left to show v equals pi one, right? Uh, let me recall the proof. So first we define pi one to be the sub representation generated, uh, sub representation of pi rho bar mod by pi zero generated by its k circle, and then check pi one is irreducible. So this, for this, we need to know some information about this k circle. Uh, we need to, to be able to compute this k circle. So, so first, uh, recall one result. Um, this is a general result. If you have a pi zero, uh, we know it's a principal series. If you have another pi prime, irreducible and a non super singular. I mean, it's a sub quotient of a principal series. If the extension y is non zero, then pi prime has to be isomorphic to pi zero. So, because we know pi zero is a circle, um, so when you want to study uh, the, the structure of a V, uh, you see you cannot, um, you can have a two possibility. I mean, for, 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 for this, uh, say, pi one. One possibility is that pi one is equal to pi zero, right? The same, same as pi zero. Um, the other possibility is that it is a super singular. Okay. We show that it cannot be pi zero because there is no extension, self extension, pi zero, pi zero, embeds in pi rho bar because if this happens, when you look at the ordinary part of pi rho bar, it will be not uh, not same thing. Because you look at the ordinary part of this uh, extension, you get a, a safe extension of the um, of two character, um, which is not semi simple as a, as a, as a t advantage. Here t is the torus, but we know. The ordinary part of pi rho bar is semi-simple. It's a, uh, already I recall the result of myself and also Wayne and Dean. And so you cannot have a, a, a extension uh, pi zero, pi zero, and that's in pi rho bar. At least this shows, uh, so for pi one, it can, cannot be a principal series. And finally, we determine the circle of k circle of pi rho bar mod by pi zero. To do this, we compute the h1 of pi zero, k1 
k1. This is possible because pi zero is a principal series. You can do uh, you can do everything. Well, principal series is easier, and you ex exclude the weights which contributing to pi zero pi zero. Okay, so roughly it's like this, and you show pi one zero. Okay, uh, so you get now you get a less two subrepresentation of pi one. Yeah, pi one cannot be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pi one cannot be uh, principal series, so this implies that it must be super singular. Yes, yes. Yeah, so this implies but you that. you still need to show it's irreducible. Okay. I mean, uh, by definition, I take something um, generated by Kesoko, so a priori we don't know whether it's irreducible. Okay. Okay. So it can be, um, for example, it can be uh, two piece, two two piece. Uh, Direct sum to be logical, yeah. But 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 we show it cannot happen. Uh, it has to be useless. I mean, um, uh, to to uh, in fact uh, to show something some representation is reducible, um, generated by circle is reducible. You just show uh, you take any silhouette in its circle, and you look at um, the the sub representation generated by this weight. You check this weight can generate all the other weights in the circle. Then uh, pi one is reduced. So the, 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 the argument is like this: you take any one in, in the in the any weight in the circle, and you check it generates the other weights. Then pi one must be reducible. Okay. So roughly the first two points shows um, um, pi one. Um, I mean. Assume it's irreducible, pi one cannot be principal series. And the last uh, point shows it has to be is irreducible. Uh, then we get pi rho bar contains a less two subrepresentation um, pi zero pi one. Okay. So I did not buy Q uh, the quotient pi rho bar mod by this subrepresentation. So we are left to show this quotient is just the pi two, right? Then we, we, we win. But the explicit structure of D0 rho bar shows the image of D0 rho bar in Q is just similar to, it's a irreducible, I mean, it's a cell weight, explicit cell weight is a equal to, uh, because we assume F equals two. So it, sigma two here is P minus three minus R zero and P minus three minus <coughs> R one of this. So, but recall that by theorem A, K, um, I mean, Q, I mean, pi rho bar is generated by the whole D0, by D0. So Q can be generated by, by the image of D0. So here is sigma two. And so by Fabinho's reciprocity, you get a subjective morphism from the compact induction sigma two to Q. So the last step is to show a general, I mean, lemma in representation theory. So if you have a Q, uh, which is a quotient of a compact induction of sigma two, and you assume um, the T cosoco of Q is irreducible and isomorphic to some principal series. So like pi two, say. So it's, it's a compact induction mode by T minus lambda for um, lambda non-zero. So um, this is your useful principal series. Assume this, then you can prove Q has to be of this form. Uh, it's, a, it's a compact induction mod by T minus lambda to some power. So N could be, so logically N could be large. You see such quotient satisfy this, uh, this condition, yeah? right? This condition. It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a Kosoko, it's, it's a, just this one, you're just both. So Q, um, you can imagine that by the work of Bardel and Binet. So Q is a self extension of N copy of, uh, of uh, the same principal series. So to finish the proof, we need to show N equals one. And so Q is isomorphic to pi two in step two. If I can show n equals one, the Q is pi two. But if not, 
you have the self duality for pi low bar. You do back, I mean, this will imply um, some, I mean, pi zero, pi zero self extension of n copies and beds in pi low bar, right? So, so if pi low bar has uh, some quotient for pi two, several copy, it also contains uh, several copy of pi zero and not split tension. But as already I, I, I said, um, it cannot happen because this contradicts uh, the fact that the ordinary parts of pi over is very simple, right? So, um, so this finished the proof and, and also finished my talk, thank you.